going to talk now about um, demographic factors, particularly uh, gender and age, as contributing to um, bereavement risk and the types of problems which arise as a result of these. Each person's view of the world is unique and changes as he and she grows older. And in a sense, we're all of us from different cultures, different worlds. Your world is unique to you, and mine is unique to me. We may have the illusion of living in the same world, but it is an illusion. I'm now wanting to consider how particularly gender and age influence the way people grieve and the problems to which these bereavements can give rise. This slide shows some of the differences already. This was uh, taken after the IRA bomb in, in Omar some years back. And you can see how the women in particular seem to be showing much more overt grieving than the, the young man, which is fairly typical in our society. Anthropological studies of 78 different cultures reviewed by Rosenblatt. And these are all anthropologists. One of the first things that anthropologists do when they visit a tribe is to go to a funeral. <laughs> and they observe what happens. And this uh, study showed that although there are many societies in which men and women are said to cry while mourning and at funerals, whenever sex difference is reported, it's the women who cry more than the men. There were no cultures where the women didn't and the men did. It does appear that there is a fairly profound uh, difference between men and women in this sense. At all times, women tend to score more highly than men on almost every measure of emotional disturbance, psychological symptoms, and health-seeking behavior. But that applies to non-psychiatric patients as well as psychiatric patients. After bereavement, such scores increase in both sexes. However, when compared with non-bereaved people of the same sex, Widowers, that's men, have less improvement than widows and take longer to return to married levels following bereavement. So it does appear that although women show much more in the way of feelings during the course of the first year of bereavement, beyond the first year it's the men which still have some remaining problems, or some of them do at all events. So men and women are different. Men are sort of traditional culture is that we should be strong, not show our feelings, and not talk about problems. Women, on the other hand, have a good cry, share thoughts and feelings. Henk Skut, University of Utrecht, did a fascinating study. He um, took people who had referred themselves to his bereavement counseling unit. This was a fairly high-powered unit. Um, where they actually admitted most of their patients for periods of up to one or two months following bereavements. And these were, were assigned at random either to what he called emotion-focused therapy, which is very much Eric Lindemann's type of approach of helping you with the grief work, letting it all hang out, to use the American expression, um, facilitating emotional expression and the more cognitive problem-focused therapy. Forget about the feelings, let's focus down on the problems that you face. The, and there was a waiting list control group. Looking first of all at the males, before the um, start of therapy, quite by chance, yeah, equal numbers were, were referred to the problem-focused group, the emotion-focused group, and the control group. And the ones in the emotion focus group had a higher GHQ, General Health Questionnaire score, uh, than the others. Following therapy, um, it was all three groups had improved, but it was the emotion focus group that improved most in the men, which was a highly significant finding. Now, <coughs> when I've talked about this, research to some audiences, I've often asked them to predict which kind of 
result would you expect? And very often, um, the audience will say, oh, well, the men will, will do best with the cognitive therapy and the women will do best with the emotive therapy. Because, you know, that's what men are good at and that's what women are good at. But it's the other way around. If you look at the women, um, it's the problem focus group who do best. And this seems to suggest that when we need help, and I'm not suggesting that this applies to all bereaved people, but amongst people seeking help after bereavement, um, the thing that you need most is what you're not good at. <laughs> in other words, if men who in our society are not very good at expressing feelings do better with a, a feeling expressive therapy, whereas women who on the whole are in touch with their feelings and are actually quite good at expressing them, may need help in rethinking, reorganizing their lives. Do you follow me? And anyway, the cognitive type group uh, benefited women more, more, more than men. And statistically speaking, these were the only significant uh, benefits. So men may need more encouragement to talk about life and permission to express feelings. Women often benefit from rethinking and replanning their lives. But of course, there's no reason why people shouldn't have both. And in training bereavement support workers, I recognize that one shouldn't say that all men need this, anything and all women need something different. We need to be focusing on what this particular client needs and trying to provide the kind of therapy that will be most effective for them, regardless of their gender.